Massey here, and uh, I'm here today to talk to you guys about uh, the top three things you can do to uh, help stabilize and grow your martial arts studio, especially if you're struggling. Now, the reason why I'm dealing with this issue in this video is because uh, I have a lot of martial arts instructors who contact me, and uh, they are either confused about what they need to do to grow their school, uh, maybe they're stuck at a particular plateau, um, or um, they... Uh, they simply don't know. They simply don't know what they need to do to uh, to grow their school and to be successful and have a profitable studio. So many times what happens is uh, martial arts instructors, they start their martial arts studio um, and uh, they simply don't have the business acumen to run a successful studio. Now a lot of us did that. I did that when I first started. That's why I failed uh, several times before I actually uh, had my first successful studio. Um, I failed quite miserably, in fact, at first. Um, but later on, um, you know, got uh, some mentors and, and studied and, and was able to, uh, to develop the, uh, the tools necessary to have a successful school. But what happens in, in other cases, and this is more common than you might think, um, people actually, uh, martial arts school owners actually go out and they get as much information as they possibly can. But then what happens is, is they get information from a, uh, several disparate sources, a bunch of different sources, and uh, they're unable to, to make all that information mesh. So um, they feel like, uh, you know, <laughs> they really don't know where to start, and they get paralysis by analysis, and then they end up contacting me for help. So typically what I do with a new client is I make sure that I, I try to alleviate um, the confusion and make things very, very simple from the start. So usually what I start my clients with is that I start them with these three things. Now, they may be things that you've heard before. Hopefully, I can provide you with some additional insights into them and uh, emphasize at least or get you to realize uh, through my emphasis how important it is to, to focus on these things uh, when you're first starting your school. So the first thing is, is attracting more students. And I know you've heard that many, many times, but one thing that I find that many new school owners uh, fail to recognize is that building revenue is the most important thing that you can do in starting a martial arts studio, really in starting any, any small business, um, any business enterprise whatsoever, unless you're, you know, you're a startup with, uh, you know, a, a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, VC investors, uh, you know, just injecting money like crazy into your startup, which I think those days are over anyway. But uh, as a small business owner, uh, especially if you're following the small dojo big profits method and you're bootstrapping your school, you really need to um, generate revenue quickly and keep revenue going. You need to get uh, rid of your cash flow issues in your school. So uh, the quickest way to do this and the best way to do that is through marketing and attracting new clients, um, growing your clientele. So um, marketing is the first step in mastering the skills that you need to know to have a successful studio. So how do you uh, go about marketing your studio? What are the most important things to focus on? If uh, you followed my materials for any length of time, you know that I'm a big fan of the 80-20 approach to doing business and the 80-20 approach to managing a martial arts studio, which is Pareto's principle. I've been a fan of it for a long time. Uh, if you've read uh, um, uh, Tim Ferriss's books, you know he talks about 80-20 a lot. Um, I talked about it in my first book, Small Loads of Big Profits, you know, over a decade ago. Um, but the 80-20 principle, Pareto's principle, says that 80% uh, of your results are going to come from 20% of your activities in any given business endeavor. And uh, I found that to be true in managing my own martial arts studios. So um, really what I like to focus on with new clients is the top 20% of marketing activities that are probably going to generate 80% of the results for a martial arts school. You know, why start off with the stuff that's only going to generate that other 20%, you know, because if... It, it may take you to generate that last 20% of, of uh, results in your marketing. It might take you like, you know, eight or 10 different things, stack one on top of the other to get that 20% when we, you could be going for the 80% with just a few marketing activities. So here they are. The first marketing activity is online marketing, which most people are aware of now. Um, a few years back, I was really, you know, <laughs> trying to make martial arts instructors aware of the fact that they needed to have a website, they needed to do lead capture and all these things. Now, um, more and more martial arts instructors are hip to this and uh, they understand they need online marketing. Um, so online marketing is the first step or the first uh, part of this, uh, if you will. I call it the three-legged stool of marketing where you have three different marketing activities that support um, the rest of your marketing activities and those are the first things you start with. So the second leg of the stool is direct to consumer marketing. So after you get your 
your online marketing done, you have a good direct response website going, you know how to drive traffic to it, and then you go to direct to consumer marketing, which is also going to drive traffic to your website and to help you get leads, capture leads from your website. So direct to consumer marketing typically um, is uh, door hangers and direct mail. And uh, either one of those will work. Um, I personally prefer door hangers because I think I get a better response rate because if you um, design them right, you know, People will, I mean, of course, they have to see them when they pull them off their door, and then they're going to see your offer right on the front if you design them properly. I think I get a better response, and, and I can do them a little bit cheaper than I can direct mail. But uh, both will do. Uh, door hangers are a little bit more um, time intensive. Direct mail is less time intensive but more expensive, so you have to decide what you're going to do. Um, after that, you want to look at your referral programs and make sure that you have referral programs in place that uh, are, number one, encouraging your students, your clients to refer people, and number two, making it easy for them to do so. Um, and you have to remind people of your referral programs, too. You can't just, you know, create, um, you know, guest cards and then expect people to bring uh, their friends in. You have to uh, encourage them to do so. And then the top of this four-legged, uh, this three-legged stool, I should say, the top part of it is um, public relations. That includes press releases and, and other things that, uh, you know, public appearances that get you attention in the local press. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing is keeping the students you have. And to keep the students you have, you need to, uh, you know, basically you need to deliver in two areas. The first is um, in promise delivery. And uh, that's basically keeping your promises, promise fulfillment, keeping your promises to your clientele. And the second is in customer service. Now, we make promises to our clientele um, when in our advertising and marketing, and then also when they are an introductory member, when they're on a trial membership. So we have to make sure that we follow through on all the promises we make to them, whether it's weight loss, learning self-defense, um, for kids getting better grades, better attitude, you know, and so forth to, you know, the things that we promise their parents. And then also have outstanding customer service to keep them uh, coming back. And going back to uh, referral marketing, if you don't uh, follow through on promise fulfillment and customer service, you're probably not going to get a lot of referrals from your clients either. So that's really important. Um, the uh, third thing that you need to do uh, after you figure out marketing and after you figure out retention, retaining your clients and lowering your attrition rates, is learning how to get paid on time and get paid enough. And that has to do, there's a lot of different moving parts there, but it's really pretty simple. It's figuring out um, how much tuition you can charge and still make a decent living in your school, okay? Um, not being at the absolute bottom of the uh, of the uh, the list of people in your area as far as tuition goes. Uh, hopefully being, you know, more at the top. I would rather have you be at the top than at the bottom or the middle. And then also raising your rates on a regular basis and finding some way to have systems in place that allow you to get paid on time every single month. So that could include some sort of recurring electronic billing system. You don't need to have a billing company anymore. There are so many um, resources out there and uh, tools and software and whatnot that you can use to do this yourself inexpensively. But definitely you need to have electronic billing in place and make sure that everybody's on some sort of electronic billing system. And then make sure that your tuition rates are um, competitive but yet still that uh, you're earning enough money from uh, from your clients to where you can you know pay your bills and make a decent living. Um, and then after that, after you figure those three things out, I will say there's an extra thing that you could possibly add in there. Um, I don't want to complicate things for you if you're just starting out, but that's tracking your numbers. Um, number <laughs> numbers really hold the keys to the universe, and and uh, they really hold the uh, the keys to the secrets of of how to run a successful martial arts studio. So I emphasize numbers a lot, although I will tell you honestly that I know um, successful martial arts school owners that don't track their numbers, um, at least not uh, to uh, any great extent. I, I even know for one really successful multi-school owner that uh, most of you guys would know if I mentioned their name that uh, told me they don't even track attendance, which just floored me. And it's not I'm not saying that I would recommend that, but you can get away with that stuff when you first start off if you're just focusing on you know, marketing, retention, and getting paid on time, and then later on get into tracking your stats when you want to maximize your profits. But uh, but uh, eventually you are going to have to do that. You will want to track your numbers because if you can't measure something, you can't improve it. Okay, so that's it. Those are the three things. Once again, let me go over them again. Uh, focus on attracting a steady stream of new students. Second, retention, plugging the holes in retention. Make sure that you're not losing them faster than you're getting them. And then third, getting paid on time. And then if you want to add a cherry on top of that Sunday, uh, start tracking your numbers. Okay, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll have several more videos coming out over the next few weeks and months. So uh, make sure that you uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Massey's Martial Arts on uh, YouTube, and then also be sure to visit mabizu.com and martialartsbusinessdaily.com to get the best information you possibly can at the most reasonable price. Most of it is actually free on Martial Arts Business Daily uh, to help you run a successful school. Once again, thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.